Are you a woman in the middle? You're in the right place. I'm Susie Rosenstein, and you are listening to the Women in the Middle podcast, episode number 12. Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, so glad you're here for this week's episode, which is all about getting a handle on what happens to you when you have expectations for people in your life, why it's hard to let go of expectations like these, and tips to move forward to more happiness and freedom, especially in midlife. Before we dive into this topic, I want to ask you an important question. Get ready. Who wants some free coaching? Yes, you heard that correctly. I said free coaching. Did you know when you leave a review for this podcast and let me know about it, you're eligible for a draw for free coaching? I'm giving an hour of free coaching away to 10 lucky listeners. Reviews are one of the best ways to help other women in the middle to help them find this podcast so they also can get some help about being stuck and frustrated. When you leave a review, the iTunes moves the podcast up higher in the relevant searches. And I really appreciate your time. So if you've been enjoying what you hear, leaving a review would be a great way to help and to show me some love. It only takes a few seconds to get specific instructions about how to do it. Just go to susierosenstein.com forward slash iTunes and it's all laid out there. The thing is, though, that iTunes doesn't let me contact you directly, so you need to let me know by email or Facebook message when you leave a review and the subject head for your review, and that will put you into the draw. On that note, I want to give a shout out to Hot Carl on Wheels, who left an awesome review and said... As a 53-year-old menopausal professional working mom who just sent her youngest off to college, I was looking for an upbeat podcast to motivate me to move forward. This podcast is perfect. Susie is positive, relatable, and enjoyable to listen to. She's a life coach with a solid message for all of us in the middle of a life transition. Can't wait to hear each new episode. By the way, it's professionally done too. Thanks, Susie, for jumping into the podcast arena. Hot Carl, thank you so much for that amazing review. I really appreciate it. You just won yourself a free hour of coaching. Just send me an email at susie at womeninthemiddlepodcast.com and I will send you my scheduling link. So today, I want to take a minute to thank you guys for tuning in and listening to the Women in the Middle podcast. I am having fun, and I really hope you are too. The feedback has been great so far, so I think we're going in the right direction. On that note, let's dive in. As I mentioned, today's episode is all about getting a handle on what happens to you when you have expectations for people in your life. When I say expectations of other people, I'm talking about what you think other people in your life should do. This is one of the most common things that pops up with coaching, and it can be a huge source of pain for people, especially you wonderful women in the middle. The bottom line is that people can seem like problems to us, and this is because we've created these things called manuals for them and of how we want them to behave. A manual is like your personal book of rules according to you. It's a bestseller too. Everyone has one. And it's big, it's full of information, but it's invisible. You probably know what the chapter titles are too in your manual. You probably have one chapter titled something like this. What my husband should do so I'll feel loved. The subheads in the chapter might be about birthdays, childcare, compliments, something like that. Another chapter might be something like this, what my kids should do so I'll feel appreciated. And those subheads might be something like the dishwasher saying thank you and calling home. (laughs) I bet there's another chapter in there called something like what my mom should do so I won't feel annoyed. And there's probably one in there about your mother-in-law. There's always something about the mother-in-law, something like Let's see, what my mother-in-law should and shouldn't say, so I will feel respected, something like that. You get it, right? We want our people, those people out there in our lives, to behave a certain way so we can feel good and happy. 
The reason a manual is a problem is that you've tied your emotional life to whether or not your people, which are your husband, your partner, your mother, your mother-in-law, your coworker, your neighbor, your sibling, whoever, you tie your emotional well-being to whether or not your people follow your rules. You see what I'm saying? So it's not that you have these ideas, opinions, and expectations about what people in your world should do or not do. It's really that if they don't do what's in your manual, you will feel a certain way, like unhappy, unloved, and disrespected, for example. But the people in your world are usually in the dark about this book. I told you it's invisible. They didn't see it on the coffee table. They don't know you're living by it. (laughs) They don't know that it exists. What I'm saying is they often don't know what the rules are. And to make matters worse, you usually have no clue that you're even doing this and no clue that your manual is causing you pain. You don't really see the extent to which you're tying your emotional well-being to the behavior of others. And you just think that your people should know what to do and how to treat you. Now, my friends, I know what you're probably thinking. It seems justified to have these kinds of expectations of other people. If you went out with your girlfriend, she would totally agree with you about some of your thoughts about what your people should be doing. But like I said, it can be really painful when your own emotional happiness is dependent upon somebody else's behavior. So when your people don't behave the way you think they should behave, you feel like crap. This is really why many of you might find the whole manual concept so confusing. You think about your rules. They are so reasonable. Like anyone with any amount of common sense they would totally agree with them. And what's harder to see, though, is how your emotions are involved. And as a woman in the middle, I know you're juggling so much. You are trying to do so much. Things would just be so much easier if people would just behave and do what they're supposed to do, right? I get it. I am one of those women in the middle. I'm right there with you. Who cares if you're clear about your expectations? Can't they just read your mind or at least read the invisible book that you're carrying around with you all of the time with all of your rules to make you happy? Now, I know you know that I'm being facetious. But this topic is a huge source of pain and suffering. Seriously, it really is. And remember, I teach something called the thought model as a tool for increasing understanding and perspective about how your thoughts create your feelings and ultimately the results in your life. And I went into detail about the model in episode two of the podcast. So if you need more information, please check that out. But the main idea here is that your thoughts create your feelings. Things that happen out there in the world do not create your feelings. What that means here is that other people's behavior has no impact on you emotionally until you actually think about it with your own brain. And that means that whatever somebody else does or says is completely neutral until you Think about it until you interpret it and until you decide what you are making it mean. Now, believe it or not, you don't ever have to give others the power to determine how you actually feel about anything, no matter what people do, no matter what they say, no matter how they act. Let me repeat that concept because it is a big one. When you have a manual for how someone else should behave, you actually give them the power to determine how you feel. This is a choice. You never have to do this. You decide what you're going to make things mean. That thought creates your feelings, not whatever was done or said. But wait. (laughs) there's more. The other thing is that so many of you forget people can act the way they want. They can do and say what they want. You don't have to agree with everything. That's not my point. But it's super important to understand that when you tie your feelings to someone else's behavior, you're essentially giving away your emotional power. You always have the ability to create how you feel, period. 
You have the ability to create how you feel. So let me give you some examples of common manual instructions or expectations. And I think you will easily be able to relate to lots of these. Okay, so I'm going to go through them quickly. He should take the garbage out when it's full. He should take the recycling out when it's full. He should take the compost out when it's full. He should call me at least once during the day and check in. He should spend more time with the kids. He should be emotionally available. She should ask me to be in her wedding party. She should respond immediately when I text. She should email me a thank you note after coming to my house for dinner. She should support me. He should get me a gift when it's my birthday. She should call me back after I call her. She should get my kid a birthday present. He should tell me he loves me. He should spend less time at the office. He should empty the dishwasher. She should clean up the kitchen. She should call before she comes over. He should say thank you when I drive him to school. He should ask me how my day was. He should come to the hospital when my father is sick. She should call me when I'm not feeling well. He should make more money. There you go. There's a whole bunch of them. So what do you think? Could you relate to some of these? These examples are short and sweet, but most of us have really long, complex manuals, much more complicated and complex and detailed than the ones I quickly went through here. Like I said, though, rather than sharing all of the gory details with the person, our people, that these manuals are about, we tend to think that he or she should just know like they should be able to read our minds. And also, like I said earlier, when they don't do what we want them to do, we go right into the thought about what this means, that they don't really love us, that they don't really respect us, they don't value us, or something like that. And I think you can see that manuals can be a huge problem. When you're in a relationship of any kind and you feel responsible for fulfilling somebody else's needs and they feel the same way about fulfilling yours, the dynamic sets you up for always wanting to control the other person. There's often a lot of manipulation and nobody wins. And in your heart of hearts, you know, you know that you can't control somebody else's behavior. None of us can. And you also know deep down that no one else can make you happy. No one has that power either. And when you understand how your own thoughts create your feelings, you can start to really see how this all applies to your personal manual. Even though people in your life may do or say things that you think about in a positive way, it doesn't mean that they make you happy even though it seems like it does. So it's the opposite is true too. This is really what happens. Here's how it goes. These people in your life, they do something. Then you interpret it and make it mean something. Then you feel something. That's how it works. <laughs> people do something, you interpret it, you make it mean something, and then you feel something. The best relationships function best when everyone understands that both partners are responsible for their own happiness. So let's take a look at an example. A client told me a story recently about her mother-in-law who would just come over without calling first. Now, I'm not throwing all mother-in-laws under the bus, but this was said recently, so I just wanted to share it. It's a good example. So this client had this mother-in-law who would just pop over without calling first. And she wouldn't just arrive at the door. She would actually let herself in and she would be quite disruptive with the small children. If they were napping, it didn't matter. When the grandparents popped in, it was like a free-for-all. This drove my client nuts. She felt furious. She completely shut down. She withdrew from her mother-in-law and she got into arguments with her husband. And then overall, she just felt extremely disrespected. So can you see what her manual was? She thought that her mother-in-law should ask permission before she came over. And when her mother-in-law didn't ask permission, she felt disrespected and angry. Now notice, it's not just that she has expectations that her mother-in-law should call. When she didn't call, she also had a huge negative reaction. So also notice how you're thinking and feeling about this example right now. And as a seasoned woman in the middle, you probably think she's being quite reasonable with her manual. 
right? And what I want to point out is that a manual is not about what's reasonable and about what's not reasonable. So I'm not suggesting that mother-in-laws should avoid asking permission about when to visit. But what I am pointing out is that when my client has a manual for her mother-in-law like this, she's giving away her emotional power. She's letting her mother-in-law determine if she's going to be angry and feel disrespected or not. You always have the option of letting go of your manual and taking your emotional power back. What's best is to realize that developing a personal owner's manual for yourself is a way better approach. This new manual would include rules about how you want to control your own behavior. This is way more effective than trying to control somebody else's behavior. It's also way less frustrating. And it is way, way, way better approach. It's just more effective. Now, I know it's not that easy to just let go of your expectations. Try asking yourself why you want people in your life to behave differently. I know this sounds simplistic, but really, I want you to ask yourself why. And the answer is always Because as much as you know better, you want to believe that it's their behavior that's causing your feelings. Now, remember, your thoughts cause your feelings, not somebody else's behavior. But we always catch ourselves wanting to believe that. So in the example I gave you about my client's mother-in-law, she believes that if her mother-in-law would call and ask permission to come over for a visit and not just barge in, she would be happier and feel respected. However, as someone who listens to the podcast, you know that it's her thoughts that create her feelings, not the neutral circumstance of her mother-in-law's behavior. It's only your thinking that creates your feeling. You can always change your thinking. Your manual is really based on what other people do. Why not have your feelings be based on what you think? You get to decide. And that is the best news ever. You get to decide how you're going to respond to life, to your people. You will have to change your thinking, though. That's the thing. You're going to have to change your thinking. So here are some suggestions. When someone doesn't follow your manual the way you want them to, you can choose to think something like this, for example. Let's go back to that mother-in-law situation. My mother-in-law likes me and cares about me. Okay, that is a thought that you can choose to think. My mother-in-law likes me and cares about me. The idea is to think a thought that creates the feeling that you want. It's something that you prefer. It's a feeling that you'd rather feel, that you want to feel on purpose. So think about this. How does this thought, my mother-in-law likes me and cares about me, how does that make you feel? If it makes you feel good, you know you're on to something. You can see that this new thought helps you create a pause and it gives you the chance to stop trying to control your mother-in-law or your people, anybody that you're trying to control. It doesn't matter if she calls or not, really. You don't have to make it mean that she's disrespecting you. That's the thing. The thought about her behavior is actually on you. And if it creates something that doesn't serve you, that's on you too. But you get to choose. Let's do another example. Let's say your partner never asks you what you want to do on your birthday, but your partner always gives you a back rub, makes you coffee, and gives you a beautiful card. You have a manual that says something like this. I think I should be asked how I want to spend my birthday. And when I'm not, I'm not happy. In fact, you notice that it's more than unhappy. You feel unloved. But you keep waiting to be asked And it just never happens. And you just feel totally bummed every year on your birthday. Do you see it? When your partner doesn't follow your manual or behave the way you want, you feel unloved. You don't have to feel unloved. You feel unloved because of your thinking, not because of your partner's birthday behavior. You can choose to make it mean something else, not something that makes you feel unloved. Your feeling is on you. It's created by your thinking, not what happens or doesn't happen. Again, you might consider letting go of this manual because it just doesn't serve you. It creates pain. 
A better thought for you might be simply that your partner loves you or your partner acknowledges your birthday. It's nice that they did something for your birthday. Not what you currently think, which is that your partner shows you how much you're loved when they ask you how you want to spend your birthday. Your new thought serves you if it creates the feeling you want on purpose. The bottom line is, when you want someone else to behave differently so you can feel better, it's a losing proposition. It's not possible because other people's actions can't dictate your feelings. It's your thoughts that create your feelings. I know I've repeated that a few times, but seriously, when these manual issues come up, it gets murky. Now, I do want to add a couple of things. There's a little difference when you're a parent or a boss. The difference with manuals is that when you're a parent, you're definitely allowed to have expectations of your children. And the same when you're a boss. You have expectations of your employees. So the type of manual you might have is different from what we're talking about here. In these situations, when you set clear expectations, you can also have clear consequences if those expectations aren't met. There's really no reason to be hurt emotionally. It's a different thing. So when you're in these roles and you're in a clean space, what we like to call clean mental hygiene, the emotion is not there because it's not about you. It's about the job you're doing, either as a parent or as an employer. For example, if you tell your 12-year-old child to call you when they get home from school, you've shared a clear expectation as a parent. It's a safety issue and it's appropriate. You want them to get in the door and get in the habit of checking with you, checking in. And if they forget to call you, you're not going to say that your feelings were hurt and that you're sad. You're going to set clear expectations and clear consequences, and you don't feel unloved in that example. Same with the boss-employee situation. When you're managing someone, you're entitled to set very clear expectations for how the employee is supposed to be handling his job, how he's supposed to, he or she is supposed to be doing his job. You set yourself up to be able to provide very specific evaluative feedback, and it's not about your emotional happiness being dependent on your employee's behavior. It's a totally different ballgame. So anyway, when it comes to manuals in general, one question always comes up. How do you make a request or negotiate things in relationships like keeping the car clean or filling the gas tank when it's empty or, you know, anything that you're negotiating or requesting? And of course, you can make all the requests in the world that you want, but the key is not to allow your emotional well-being to depend on whether or not the requests are met. That's it in the nutshell. That's the big difference. If you make failure to comply with the request something that creates pain for yourself, then you need to open up your manual. You need to put on your reading glasses and you need to take a close look at what's going on. Letting your manual go can be really, really freeing. Your new manual can be more about just loving your people, loving those peeps, trying to enjoy them more just the way they are. You can have requests, we were just talking about requests, but whether or not they decide to honor them has nothing to do with you. Their behavior has to do with them, your behavior has to do with you and your feelings, which come from your thoughts. So always try to remember that even though you catch yourself thinking that you would be happier if he or she would just do this or that, It's really not true. So ask yourself these questions when you think a manual is opened up wide and affecting your life. Ask yourself these questions when you sense that you are carrying around an Amazon bestseller. One, what are the details about what you really, really, really would like them to do? Two, why do you want them to behave this way? And three, what do you make it mean when they don't behave the way you want? So the insight about your manual should be illuminating. And I'm not talking about an itty bitty book light. I am talking about a big, huge spotlight. The advice here is really to let them be them and you be you. Practice loving your people just as they are. So you guys, my people, that's it for this episode. I really hope I made the case 
for you to think about what's in your manual and how you would like to rewrite it on purpose. Your friends and family won't know what hit them. (laughs) So being a woman in the middle is really the best place to be. I'm convinced, and I know we're in this together, one expectation and one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening and have an amazing week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Women in the Middle. If you liked what you heard and want more, head over to womeninthemiddlepodcast.com slash guide to download a free actionable guide that will help you break out of your midlife funk and start living the life you want. Oh,